Welcome to FinTalks, a chat with Finance Malta Members Edition. With me today, I have Adriana Camilleri Vassallo, CEO of FJ Vassallo and Associates Group, um, together with Albert Alsina, who is the CEO and Managing Partner of Mediterranean Capital Partners. During this podcast, we are going to uh, discuss the role of ethics in the financial services. It's a topic that I must say we've been discussing during these podcasts uh, for a number of uh, months, I would say now. Thank you so much, Mrs. Vassallo and Mr. Alsina, for joining me uh, for this uh, podcast. My first question is to you, Adriana. Um, To what extent do you dream, um, do you envisage that a a company should have ethics, work ethics, um, and why is it so important? First of all, good morning, Rachel. Um, Yes, well, ethics and financial services are um, extremely important. Um, From establishing an ethical organization, um, financial services at the end of the day is built on ethics and trust. And without trust, I mean, everything that we do within our industry is focused on trust. And um, with trust, you're looking at clients actually trusting, placing their most um, hard-earned assets um, in the hands of other companies, directors, and in an industry and a new jurisdiction. So it's extremely important that any company would operate strong ethical values, demonstrate good corporate um, governance, and drive good strategies and decision-making driven by ethical principles. So this, from our perspective, is really crucial for a good functioning financial services industry. In reality, everything we do, and this is why we find it so important when you're talking about ethics and and trust, it's all built on relationships. And we truly, um, in in our view, in my view, that when we're talking about financial services, it's um, we need to push the relationship management concept because um, that is really where you understand your clients. You get the background of the clients through not, it's it's extremely important when you're talking about ethics to do your compliance checks and know your clients from a tick the box approach. However, when you talk about compliance and know your clients, it's really built on building the relationship with the clients, understanding their needs, their backgrounds, and what they represent and how Malta as a jurisdiction can actually add value to their needs. And this, in in my opinion, is extremely important. And it's all driven to, when you're looking at ethics, there are very relevant topics that need to be introduced is how the leadership, the leadership of an organization, I'm not just talking about leadership of country, I'm here, I'm talking about the the organizations within the financial services industry. You're talking about the structure of a company. Exactly, the the role of the director, the integrity and experience of a director. Um, We're looking at the the um, diversification of the board. Yeah. So the perspective. And the leadership in the organizations basically have to set the tone of ethics within an organization. And this tone has to be set from the top and echo throughout the organizations. Mm -hmm. And this isn't just within the organization. I truly believe that this has to be set at the tone of the whole jurisdiction and the industry and echo throughout. And that is what will create a financial services industry which is sustainable into the future, okay? And um, it's all about also leading by example and creating strategies which have an underlying foundation um, being of ethical principles within their strategic um, decision-making process. Um, When we're looking at also ethics, in in my opinion, also we're looking at, and well, not just my opinion, but we're looking at good governance, the processes and procedures within the company, the business integrity and the integrity of the, of not only the, the leadership, but everybody within the company. Um, one thing that I always say, and I always tell the staff at, as well, um, it's all about everybody, um, all the stakeholders counting on each other and relying on each other and feeling that they can trust each other. And it even extends to the fact that when, when you're talking about ethics and you're talking about trust, 
Um, it's not just if something has to go wrong, it's not just the reputation of the directors that are affected, it's actually the reputation of every single member of staff within the company. Mm -hmm. And it's our obligation as directors to actually protect that, protect the reputation of the company, the staff, and the industry, and the country at the end of the day. So that is why I feel it's extremely important that we really drive ethics into literally our DNA. So basically what you're saying is, w what you're talking about is ethics within the company itself. So the implementation of those ethics from the director all the way to the receptionist, let's say, how you implement those ethics vis-a-vis um, -vis to attract the right people, the right personnel to your, to your company. But w when, when a client comes in, and this is where maybe uh, Albert also can pitch in, um, is, is interested in opening a company in Malta um, and he comes to you, what sort of ethics you two decide to implement um, and to take on board? Because obviously you have to check whether Albert is an important, uh, is, a, is a trusted rather than an important, is a trusted company. And even Albert needs to feel safe that he is mm -hmm. in good hands. How does this chemistry works? Yes, I probably, th that's a great, uh, that's a great, uh, you know, uh, outcome of uh, what Adriana was saying. At the end of the day, finance is based on trust and on ethics, right? It cannot be otherwise. Uh, but when we met, for example, Evie Vasayo, uh, we had a, a very, I would say, number of meetings that get to know us. And that relationship that Adriana was saying before, that is the key and the fundamental of how do you start a, relation, a business relationship. Because there is so many signs that you can see in a meeting, in a lunch, in a dinner, you know, that, that gives you that element of do I trust that person or not? Because how is trust being built? It's just by looking at the person and saying, you know what, I trust that person. The way that person trusts uh, the waiter, the way that person, you know, talks to you and the other people, the way many things, many exa small examples that, that starts building there. And then there's another part which is extremely relevant as well, which is the KYC processes. You know, when you go through a very, I would say, in-depth uh, KYC process, and uh, FG Vasayo, as many other service providers do nowadays, uh, you get to know uh, that person uh, with uh, all the right elements to uh, ensure and assure that this is from the books and from the looks. It's someone that you can trust and you can do business. So I think this is, uh, the, I will say, the start of that relationship. But the relationship is something that goes beyond one KYC process or one very small element that tells you, you know, if it's worthwhile uh, doing that uh, uh, client or not. It goes to the long-term relationship that you build with your clients, you know, uh, because let's face it, uh, through these uh, five, six years, you always have uh, problems that uh, arise uh, when managing your business. And it's very important to know who are you dealing with to ensure that they bring the right solutions to your challenges or, or, or issues. So I think that's uh, really well said what Adriana was saying in terms of that relationship building and, uh, and, and the trust and ethics which have to be fundamental on the finance business. And I think all of this leads probably to something that maybe we'll discuss later on, which is the purpose that we have within companies. You know? uh, companies without a purpose are companies without a soul. It is very relevant nowadays to have in your company a well-defined purpose that tells you why you're doing that, why you're working, where you're working, you know? I think it's not just a matter of getting a salary nowadays, it just also is, I do because of what? And that what is very important to define it. Okay, um, Adriana, you were talking um, uh, like why ethics are important. Now let's, uh, let's get those ethics more in the concrete um, examples. So like, for example, your firm, FJ Vassallo, what, uh, um, how does it implement these ethics on a daily basis now? Okay, well, first of all, I think it's very important um, the fact that we are a number of partners who all share the same core values and ethics is ingrained in our mission statement. But just being ingrained in the mission statement is not enough. It's what, how you actually um, live it. Mm -hmm. on your day-to-day -day way of doing business. Um, one of the things, we've been in business for 20, uh, 20 years plus, and um, it, we truly believe that our 
business is not just purely driven by the bottom line. Um, obviously, profits are important because you need to pay salaries, you need to take care of staff. But if you are driven, as Alvaro was saying, by a, a bigger purpose, um, the profits should come secondary. And uh, to make sure that you are actually um, not just selling companies and structures to clients, but by understanding their needs, you're proposing solutions. And this is very important. Having the, the ability to say, no, this structure does not work in Malta. You don't have economic substance. Um, there are another thing that we look at and we, we live by every day is the financial landscape has changed. Mm -hmm. So driving companies to Malta or promoting Malta for tax efficiency reasons should not be the main goal that we are pushing through. Malta has a lot more to offer. The corporate flexibility. We have structures which are very good for succession planning and estate planning. These are the principal drivers why clients may choose Malta as a jurisdiction of choice. And then the tax will be an ancillary reason. But this is something that we do drive every day and we instill it in the staff. It's all about training the staff as well, making sure because driving ethics is also pushing competence training staff is very crucial that they understand the structures and risk management because that is also crucial that you understand the risks that are posed to you every day and again this is done through training by having uh, the right qualified and competent staff and also knowing how and where to assess the risks and this is also driven by the relationship management because risks I mean and having a, a, a complement of staff from various disciplines also very much assists because we all come together and we assess structures not just from source of funds source of wealth of a client of course that's important we need to be in line with the regulations but also assessing risks of the structure as a whole mm -hmm. you know um, from all angles and this is something we drive every day and um, this is why and also building relationships how we we put ethics in every day a lot of our clients as an example with albert and many others have been with us for many years and we've grown together and we we're transparent with each other and we're honest if things are not working we need to have a conversation and be totally honest and I and 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 what can be improved how we can work together as all stakeholders to protect the company the the mutual businesses and also the jurisdiction um, Albert the the you when you decided to come to Malta and um, open your company here um, what type of platforms, what type of infrastructure, the framework that you are looking for uh, for your business, especially if you're doing business as well again internationally um, and to promote your business in an ethical way? Yes, uh, so, so look, when we in 2013 decided to move to Malta, we actually did a, a, a comparison of four or five different jurisdictions on a worldwide basis. And Malta came on the top for many reasons. The first one was a personal one, because let's face it, you know, when you decide to move to a country, you're looking for good weather, good food, and good people. And the three of them, actually, we found out here in Malta. Also, <laughs> international. From Spain, right? I'm from Spain, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but also, we found out as well, very good schooling, very good uh, uh, high level of accommodation. So all of those things were also part of it. But Let's now focus on to the business perspective, which is also very relevant to what we're talking today. You know, when you look at uh, Malta, uh, Malta being one of the financial, I would say, uh, sector, financial sectors uh, that uh, for me are very relevant for the economy, uh, you, we found out with, first of all, with the, 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 one of the big pillars of the country, which is the regulator, the MFSA. Uh, I found the regulator very approachable uh, very easy to work with, uh, and uh, they basically had time for me. And many of the other regulators did not have time for me when I went and visit them in different countries. That to me was like, I would say, and that was, uh, of course, orchestrated by FJ Basayo and the introduction that they did to me to all of this. But on top of this, it's not only only a regulator, but also uh, as well the, the, the Malta Business Register, which is a, it's a friendly approach on when you create a company. Uh, today we have about 22 companies in Malta. Every time we do an investment, we create it from here. 
from our structure that we created, you know, we look at auditors of good quality. Uh, it's very relevant as well. Uh, compliance officer of good quality, uh, anti-money laundering officers, uh, board, senior board members of good quality as well. Um, all of these uh, sector-driven services in the financial, uh, uh, with in the financial sector, which for us were very relevant. Uh, from here, we have managed to uh, uh, fundraise uh, our first initial fund of 120 million euros. Uh, today, we have uh, sh we're short of uh, half a billion. Uh, after these uh, uh, seven years of being in Malta, we have, and then that drives as well to what is the result of that. No, at the end of the day, you guys came here. We came here to Malta, Mediterranean Capital Partners. Uh, I was basically me and a pen, and and then I had a lot of support from service providers like uh, Adriana's team, uh, like many others, uh, uh, fund administrators, for example, uh, uh, corporate firms that they do all their corporate uh, paperwork when you do it. The result of that today, we employ over 22,000 people in Africa. We do it from Malta. And, and this is thanks that Malta has enabled us to create the right financial platform, uh, being uh, an investment manager, a fund structure, uh, uh, administrator, compliance, depository, all of the right at the highest level of ethical because our investors are worldwide top investors, like the World Bank, like the European Investment Bank, like the, the Bank for Development and Reconstruction. Those very high uh, financial institutions on a worldwide basis, they, they check the box on every single thing that we needed to have in Malta. And, and this has been Malta enabling, enabling us to go to that level. Uh, I also think that is very relevant as well is that when you build a firm that as today we employ more than 22,000 people from Malta, all in Africa, by the way, which that has been our main target. And that is all been, all of that has been wrapped up by a purpose, a purpose of ensuring that uh, we, of course, delivering returns to our investors, very healthy returns. In our second fund, we, we are north of 18% per annum. And in the, our third fund, we look at that similar returns uh, but more importantly, as equally importantly, is the purpose that the company drives on ensuring that it's a social impact across investments that we do. Uh, we have invested in hospitals. We have invested in clinics in Egypt, in Jordan, hospitals in Morocco. We have invested in uh, generics manufacturing of drugs in Algeria. We have invested in fast consumer goods across the country. We have in a bank in West Africa, Ivory Coast, Senegal, and all of that, and the, and the bank, for example, is focused on low-income families. Uh, all of that has generated a huge impact across the countries that we invest that I would say we're making a better Africa, you know, we're making a better place to live, uh, making sure that at that level, the ethics, as we have said before, as Adriana was mentioning before, and I think is the topic of this, of this discussion today, it is at the core of everything that we do. We don't take shortcuts, you know, we, you, we're part of an active part of those boards and of those companies. And all of this has been thanks to Malta having created this platform. Uh, Adriana, as Albert had said, um, he came to Malta, him and Epen, and then nowadays he employs 22,000 people in Africa. Um, obviously, this, this um, begs the question, financial services, and in your case, your firm, is... Um, responsible for not just uh, uh, Albert's company to be in Malta, but also to be able to invest in other countries. So how important is, again, going back to ethics and the financial structure and the company, the financial services company that is providing mm -hmm. these people to be, um, to know what, what, is, what it's doing, because we obviously don't live in a capsule. No, it's very important for us. First of all, it's very important for us that we, we have been able to be a part of that um, in the sense that uh, it, it makes us very proud that, that um, through the way we've done business and, and our relationship with the clients, we've been able to assist um, those companies like um, those of Mediterranean Capital to springboard off Malta and to be able to, to create that value creation in the other jurisdictions. Um, yes, uh, we, we, for us it's been extremely um, important that we, we, we grow the sector, we protect the sector as well. 
um, this is also very important. And, and when we come to the ethics and the importance of ethics as well, you realize that when you are actually speaking to clients, you actually share the values. And when you share the values, like attracts likes, and you, 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 um, y you speak, you're on the same page, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a kind of business that we feel that needs to be, um, you know, attracted more to, to, to Malta. The fact that companies that, that have that underlying purpose, that we share the purpose with them, the purpose of a bigger picture. And um, for us, it's extremely important mm -hmm. to be... Do to you envisage any threats? Oh, there are always threats. There, there'll be continuous threats. I mean, the financial services industry is evolving. Um, it's very fluid. And we need to be on top of it. And we need to make sure that as a jurisdiction, we are agile. Because the moment we become static, and that is when the, the biggest threat. So, and again, I mean, when we look at the business, how we were operating 20 years ago, yes, I mean, we took a different approach to business. I, now, as I mentioned earlier, the standards have raised, the expectations of um, the investors have, been, have increased, you know, they've, they've raised as well. So we need to meet those expectations and we need to also be there to assist because bringing companies to Malta and attracting business is also important that we make the life easy. Easy, not, um, not meaning easy that the wrong kind of business comes into Malta, but even the processes that we can simplify and maybe we can use, um, you know, the digital technology. We move in a direction that we start facilitating, you know, now we know with the, with the pandemic has promoted you know, remote working, we all know that. So we take advantage of that. One of the things, for example, we're also looking at is also promoting the court um, CSR. And with that, you know, going paperless, we have opportunities to electronic signature to facilitate clients, um, you know, and make sure that set an example by setting an example for ourselves to facilitate the process for the clients. Um, they would also maybe, in some cases, use that as an example to, to introduce it within their firm. So this is something that we're also looking at. Do you share the same views? <laughs> yes, look, ab absolutely. But I think uh, probably I want to underline one thread that I think is very evident in the Maltese financial sector. And that's the threat of not having proper processes for proper compliance. I think what has happening now in the financial sector, compliance is taking over. Mm -hmm. and what it means that is that companies like myself and Adriana and many other companies, we spend a huge amount of time ensuring that we have the paperwork, the right traceability, to make sure that we meet those compliance standards that should have been always been there. And because they were not properly done in the past, it means that we have to pay a price now to ensure that there is a higher level of energy, time, dedication, money, and frustration to do proper compliance. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest threat is that companies like ours, like Adriana's, like any other company in Malta today, and that includes, uh, to bigger extent, the banking sector in Malta, that compliance overburns the processes, mm -hmm. the normal streamlined processes. It is very important in, in finance to be efficient of what you do. It is not a matter of lowering the standards but it's a matter of improving the processes and the systems that enable us to do what we have to do. It, is not, uh, it doesn't make any sense that it takes you six months to open a bank account, for example. It doesn't make any sense when you have a business which is complex or complicated that you have to explain it. It, it makes sense to do that compliance, but it doesn't make sense that it takes that long because what is happening now is that the market is adapting the market itself with adding more resources which need to be trained and educated and, and there is not just enough of our systems in place to make that light and quick of a response. Because as you know, in finance, time is an essence and time is money. So whenever you make a decision that you have to invest in a company or you have to do a transaction or you have to do something, you need to make sure that everything around yourself, it is ready for, to make that move at a quick space. So that thing to me, there's one of the biggest threats that we have today, that, that Malta doesn't become, uh, I would say, the flexibility and the quickness that Malta always had as being in a 
a small community that everybody knows each other becomes trapped and, and, and with, uh, with entangles with uh, not proper compliance processes. Do you agree with this? You've been in the industry for 20 years. Absolutely. Um, I totally agree with everything Albert is saying. Um, we have to make sure, yes, as Albert was saying, that we are compliant. As a jurisdiction, it's a requirement, you know, the regulations, that is absolutely important. But at the same time, we need to create a balance between compliance and doing business. And that is, a, that is fundamental, because one thing we cannot do is have um, compliance drive everything on its own. I mean, we need to create this balance. And, and the experiences that Albert has mentioned with respect to opening of bank accounts, we're having very many discussions with people in the industry on this point. And yes, and we always say we totally support the banks that they have a very tough job in making sure that the right business f flows through, through the banks. But working together as an industry where the corporate service providers, the banks, the regulators, sharing certain information, which without tipping off or what have you, to make sure that we have uh, a communication channel to, to make it much more efficient would be extremely beneficial. Because at the moment, it seems that we're all working a bit, we may seem, it, we're a bit working in isolation. And if we work together, we are stronger to defend the financial services industry of Malta, but we can create a more agile approach that Albert is saying is very necessary because we've had experiences where co companies have set up in Malta and they couldn't open a bank account and they thought, why come to Malta in the first place? Let's go elsewhere because the underlying importance is, although a bank account does not create substance, having a Malta company without the <laughs> a Malta bank account, not being able to, to have one, has a very big impact on, on certain clients of integrity. So it's, it's So apart from the let's call it the bureaucracy of compliance, um, the importance of collaboration of, of industries is crucial. That's what you're saying, right? Absolutely. We need to work together. And um, uh, the banks, the, the service providers, like I mentioned, and the regulators, and, and, and listen to each other because it's important that we listen to each other because we can improve by listening to each other. I think it already happens. It is happening and I'm seeing that we, we do listen to each other and there are a lot of forums and, and, um, and uh, organizations where we representing the industry players um, as where we, we are working together to, to move forward to improve and that is very important. But what we have to keep definitely at the forefront of our, what, what we do is to realize that it is not how we perceive ourselves to be that counts, it's how others perceive us to be that matters. And if we are thinking we are acting in one way and doing it properly in one way, at the end of the day, we need to listen to the clients as well. Adriana, Alberto, thank you so much for joining me uh, for this podcast. I encourage you all to follow this chat on our YouTube channel of Finance Malta and also on all our media platforms. Thank you very much. Thank you.